Okay, we're finally going to get into the meat of flatting. And I just, again, want to start off that this is how I work. This is not necessarily how everyone works, not necessarily how you should work. Um, I, it's just the way I do things. So uh, to start off, some people prefer to work in a lot of layers. Some people prefer to work in virtually no layers. It's really all about personal preference. Me personally, I like when I send flats out to flatters that I have them separate the background and the foreground. It just gives me a little more flexibility later on. Um, and so that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do. So the first thing I'm going to do here is create a new layer uh, by, again, selecting this box down here and do use the shortcut if you want. Um, so here I'm just going to call this BG. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hide my layers to hire guides to hide my guides. I just hit Control H, and then I hit M, which is the marquee tool, uh, the square marquee tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab each of these background areas and sort of get a base color laid in. Again, some flatter or some colors are going to want you to do uh, very specific colors. I prefer you to do specific colors. In fact, I'll usually provide something like a color key. So for example here, you see the color key for Gesh, or this guy Ethan, uh, is right here. And so what I've done is create areas where you can see exactly what color he should be. One of the cool things actually with Creative Cloud, I don't remember if the prior versions did this, is even if I can have this up over here and still be focused on this area. Again, if you, if you didn't use it before, you're, it's not going to mean a lot to you, but it's actually kind of convenient because it allows me to not, whereas it used, used to be when I clicked here, this would kind of disappear, would go behind. It doesn't do that anymore, which is kind of cool. Um, so any game, uh, anyway, I'm going to start off and I'm going to start blocking in the background. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in, control plus, control plus, and if I hold the space bar, it's going to create uh, that little hand icon and I can, you know, drag things around. So what I'm going to do is start up here. What you want to do is you want to be underneath, we're underneath the line art, which is on this layer in the background. And what I'm going to do is select in between those two layers, click, and I'm going to drag down to right about here. And I'm just going to select a blue color and all backspace. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Alt backspace, and same thing over here. And again, you don't have to do the you, you don't have to do this the whole thing. You could get precise right from the beginning, but I like to just kind of block things out. Alt backspace, and again here I am going to make a similar selection and alt backspace. I want to be careful not to go outside the lines. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the lasso tool. And again, that's the L key. And I'm going to hold Alt. What Alt does is it allows me to actually, if you hold Alt, it, create, lets, it sort of holds you to the last point that you clicked. And so what I can do is just click, 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 and create a very, um, well, I guess it's basically like a polygon lasso. I think it switches it to. And it gives me that. If you were to just not hold Alt, you can just freeform and draw however you want. One cool thing is you can actually, you know, switch between the two, and you can hold Alt down the whole time. But if you hold down the left mouse button, um, it lets you do freeform drawing. So anyway, uh, I'm going to do here, and I'm going to actually left click, or I'm going to Alt click, and I'm going to draw a line across here. One thing you can do, and I'll show you two different ways, you could actually go around the whole space or you can do this. And because I've already selected um, the, selected that whole area, right? I've got the blue and I've got white. What I actually can do is use the wand tool, which is W, oops, sorry, cube accent. Hit the wand tool and rather than making a selection, I can actually make a deselection. So to do that, you hold Alt, and then you select the area, see how it changes to a little minus the wand underneath. What I can do is select the area I don't want, and now it's going to snap to the blue area. So if I was to turn this off, you can see, I hit the area here, it would snap to that. Here it would do the opposite. So I'm going to select that. And for the Q 
here I'm just going to select a random yellow color and all backspace to fill that in. And so now, because I did it that way, I don't have any weird lines. Whereas if I was to have drawn it manually, I might have ended up with some weird um, extra lines in there. And so I'm going to do the same thing here. You should probably zoom in. Uh, I'm I'm going a little you know loose here, but you you normally would want to zoom in when you're doing this kind of detail so that you don't end up, uh, especially because it looks like some of this was by hand drawn, not with the rulers, it's not perfectly straight. Um, so I'll show you what I mean by if I had gone in between right now. So I'm just, instead of going out here and deselect, I'm going to do this. I will, though, hit W and deselect this. Um, and here I'm just going to select another color, uh, green, and fill that. So you can see, see how it has a nice little edge here, right? Well, I'm going to turn off the line art and show you what the difference between using that method uh, is, was before. So you can see how underneath the line art, because I didn't draw out and, you know, hit um, the wand and deselect, there's still a little blue edge here. This is actually not going to hurt anything. Um, again, I would probably urge you to do it the other way, but it's certainly not going to hurt anything. And by the way, the, the ink dropper is I, so I'm actually going to grab this yellow. So again, hit I, grab this yellow, and I'm going to do this area up here as well. So I'm going to W, deselect. And so now I have all the background. I mean, obviously this one's a fairly simple background, but everything is sort of filled in. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a new layer, and I'm going to mark this as character layer. And again, I'm going to pull over a Gesh since we have reference for this guy. And I'm going to hit I and grab his skin tone. And so again, the, the, the artist here, Chris Wharton, was kind enough to put together this color sheet. So it actually helps us out quite a bit. And so what I'm going to do is grab the skin tone and jump back over here. And now I'm going to, and this you're going to want to zoom in for because you want to make sure you have the details. And I'm going to get this all filled in. And here I don't necessarily recommend overfilling because this is actually going to, because we're doing this accurately, when we go to do the other things, we're going to be able to use that one deselect method uh, to much more quickly narrow down our um, our selections. So I want to be careful about his mustache here. Because I don't actually want that to... I mean, I could go back in afterwards, but I don't want that highlight on his mustache to get set. So, again, this is one way to do this. Uh, I'll show you how to do it with the pencil tool as well. So I'm just going to finish that up. And then all backspace, and now we see he is filled in, which is fantastic. So here's what I was talking about. So we see the shirt um, is right here. So I'm going to grab, hit I again, and grab the shirt swatch. And now what I'm going to do is, similar to what I do at the background, I'm going to select, actually I've got to stay in line somewhat, select this. And I'm just going to get overlap this. So one thing to keep in mind, and the reason why I conform to the lines, remember this, as far as this layer is concerned, all that's there is the skin. So if I was to have gone outside the box and then use the wand option, it's going to snap up to here because this doesn't, as far as it's concerned, it doesn't exist because I'm not sampling all layers. Uh, if I was sampling all layers, it probably would work, I, but we're just, for the purposes of this, we're going to do this. So... What I'm going to do is deselect this, and now I'm going to fill in, and now we've got his shirt. So again, you see very quickly, without having to take a ton of steps, I now have those two pieces flatted in. Um, I think his eyes are just white, so I'm going to actually hit X, which if you look over here, flips the colors, what was in the foreground goes to the background and vice versa, and I'm going to make a selection around the eyeball 
and fill it with light. Same thing over here. Same thing. And fill it with light. Now I'm sure his eyes are supposed to be a different color. Um, so what I'm going to do is just invert it and use this blue to fill it. And when this goes to be colored, uh, you can always change that pretty easily as long as it's consistent. So now you have a panel that is, well, it's not 100% done, but it's very close. In this case, let's take his mustache. Since it seems to have black hair. And we'll use a blue. Um, oh, hair, right there. Make that blue. So, perfect. So that panel is now done. Uh, and so it really all it is is you're just going to keep going through all the various pieces. In this case, I have his... Um, character colors as well for Diedrich and just start laying them in and you know layering those effects in, and not effects but layering those pieces in until you have a completed picture um, one other way you can do this and I'm going to show you now is to use the pencil tool I don't if you're using Wacom I'm sure the pencil tool is, is a much better solution I have never been good with it I know that a lot of colors uh, absolutely make fun of me because I have not um, really gotten on board with it, but um, this might be quicker for you if you you know you use a tablet. So all you have to do is again hit you know hit V, uh, which is pencil tool if you have it set to default, and you can create the, make them larger and make the the brush smaller and larger by hitting the right and left brackets. The right bracket makes it bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. You can also manually go in and do it with the size here, but it's much, much quicker if you use the shortcut on the keyboard. And all you're going to do there is just, you know, paint up to the edge. The problem is it is very easy to potentially miss an area if you're not zoomed in um, quite a bit here. But, I mean, you can see, I mean, it's depending on, you know, your preference, this could be just as quick, um, if not quicker, uh, than than doing it with the lasso tool. Again, that my preference is the lasso tool, but it's because that's, you know, I live and breathe that thing for photo manipulation and everything else. So, um, so that's it. Uh, that really gets you on, you know, underway. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, and if it was, then, you know, let us know and we'll put together some more tutorials like this, maybe on, you know, fully coloring this page out. Um, or even, you know, some other stuff that people might be interested in. We're going to be doing some lettering tutorials as well, uh, and we look forward to hearing from everybody. Thank you.